like you said, welcome. This is really sort of thrilling that you are here and we are here. Uh, uh, there are lists on your chair, and we decided we're going to mix it up and not start where it starts. We're going to start with nonfiction. We're going to do this fast and furious. It's sort of like speed dating with books. We're going to talk very briefly about many, many things. Uh, so much has happened in the last year, and there, so there are many books that usually I'm saying, oh, I told you about this one. It was a hardback. Now it's a paperback. Well, we jumped right over that. We're into the next thing. And lots of us had lots of time to read, so you may recognize some of these. But let's start with nonfiction. I'm also going to talk about a few books that aren't out yet because it's early days. And uh, First book on your nonfiction list is Homemade by Liz Houck. This is the story of a young woman whose father has died, and she is mourning and decides that in, in, in a way to memorialize him, she is going to go and work as a volunteer at the home for boys where he worked his entire life. So she decides she's going to teach these kids how to cook. Um, she's just one of these people who you can't help but like because she's so earnest. She shows up. She does it. She gets to know these kids, and they're quite wonderful. Uh, they have issues of their own. But they they are they are there for her and vice versa. It's really very sweet and okay. Paradise by Lizzie Johnson. She is the woman who covered the Paradise Fire for the Chronicle. Really knows her stuff, and her Chronicle coverage was wonderful. This goes way deeper. It is so many interesting stories about living through that a really fast and furious fire. So you've got chapters on PG&E, you've got chapters on people driving school buses out, you've got just the most horrific and wonderful and crazy stories going on. And then at the end, she does tell you how things turned out for the people who you've been following. I didn't think I would want to read a fire story, but I was really engrossed by this. This is an FYI, Billie Jean King, who was one of the first everything in feminist sports, has written her own autobiography, and this is absolutely worthy of your time, if you're a tennis person in particular. Bernie Krause, our local wonderful science guy, uh, Bernie studies animals, sounds in nature, and he has written a book about bringing quiet and tranquility into your own lives. Uh, it's a bit of a departure for him, but it is beautifully done and worth your time and effort, but absolutely fun. Um, the Night the Lights Went Out, Drew Maggery was um, a magazine editor. They were having an award ceremony. They were at a bar in, in New York, and all of a sudden, he passed out. He hit his head so hard that it's a miracle he lived through it. And this is about his coming back from this hideous injury and how that affected the people around him, uh, his wife and his kids and so on, and you know, told from their perspective as well. He's very chatty. Uh, it's a fun book to read, even though it's not an easy subject matter. It's still something that once you start reading, you want to keep going. This is Ear Hustle. Uh, Ear Hustle is a podcast. This is a book based on the young woman and her compatriot who is, is was, he's now out of prison in San Quentin. And it's about prison life told by prisoners. And it is really compelling. I, I never thought I would want to read more, but the stories they tell and the real glimpse of what real life is like in prison. And San Quentin is one of the good ones from his point of view. They have things like classes and, and they have a radio lab and things like that where things can change as opposed to sitting in a cell for hours and days on end. So if you want a real look at a real ugly side of life and uh, motivate you to perhaps step forward and speak up. That's that's the book. On the complete opposite scale, 
pastoral song is a farmer in Britain who uh, is trying to keep his family farm going. And he just tells the most lovely stories. He, he inherited the farm from his father who bought pieces of it from this guy and that guy. They go way back in the farming world and they're just lovely people and you really want them to, to make it. And they will. Graceland at last. You know how I always say I don't like short stories? Well, I do like essays. There's something a little different about reading a short nonfiction piece than reading a short fiction piece. And we have a huge section of essays that no one knows to go look for. So Margaret Rankle writes for the New York Times and other places. It's divided into things like community and nature. And she lives in Tennessee. She has a different lifestyle than we're used to, but has an interesting perspective of things. Um, this and many others, all worth your time. Mary Roach has a new book. Uh, if you want to laugh and learn some science stuff and go off on strange tangents, mm -hmm. Mary Roach is always good for that. This one is about animals, hence fuzz. And last on the hardcover, Beautiful Country by Yan Julie Wang. This is an immigrant story uh, growing up with a family that is in constant fear of being caught out by the immigration people, even though they aren't actively looking for them. They live in fear, and it's what it's like to be a kid with that hanging over your head, and then going through her her life as she gets beyond that, goes to college, and, and grows into her own self. Beautifully told, uh, apparently she lives in the city now, but she grew up in, in New York and area, and that's a worthy immigrant story for you. Okay, so armchair travel is always fun, but Grand Tour is really fun because this is a guy, I don't know if you've ever been in, traveling in Britain and seen the buses of old age pensioners who go around and, and, and they, they travel together, they get on and off the bus, well, he decided he was going to go with those old folk and see what it was like. His his take on life as an elder is quite amusing. Uh, Fathoms, so many good science stories, so many good narrative nonfiction. This is whales, and who doesn't like whales? So I thought I'd bring it to your attention because it's just out in paperback. Uh, Deborah Madison one of the founders of Green's Restaurant, a Zen practitioner. And this is her memoir of becoming a Zen person and then finding food and being at the, the start of the food movement and then starting Green's and what it's like to run a restaurant. Mudlark. Mudlark is what they call the people who go along the River of Thames and look for stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's very fun. It's, you know, you, they find clay pipes, they find old coins, they find pieces of pottery. It's just one of those things that people do, and this is a story about it. Lost Pianos of Siberia. She decided that she wanted to find out what happened to these pianos that were taken by sled all across Russia, to the, the outposts in Siberia, and that's her concept. And she finds them, and they're in strange places, and some of them still work as pianos, and some of them are pieces of pianos and what have you. Uh, it's just one of those crazy travel stories, and she does a real good job of following leads and meeting interesting people along the way. Owls of the Eastern Ice, this guy is a scientist, but he's also a very fun writer. And he he went to find the fish owl, which is what he calls it. Says it looks like a bear with feathers. It is the biggest owl. It is way out in the middle of nowhere. He had crazy experiences with people who were supposedly his guides, and uh, it's I seem to have picked all travel this time, but it's very fun. We can't travel. Read about it. That's how it works. Same thing, stranger in Shogun City. <laughs> this is a Japanese woman and what it is like to, to be a, a woman in Japan now and before. 
It starts in the 19th century and it goes up to current times. And lastly, Group, which is a book about group therapy. And it's written by a person who is a psychiatrist and then joined a group in order to get her own stuff in order. So it's, it's a process, but it's also pretty interesting just to find out how things work and apply them to your own whatever. Okay? And I'm going to let Rosie go. I'm Rosie. I'm the children's buyer here. Um, so we're going to start with picture books. The first one, it's from the Fan Brothers. They do these beautiful pencil illustrations. So in this story, a marble falls down into a garden, and all of the insects are very, very curious as to what this is. They're like, this is beautiful, beautiful marble that's just here. And then the spider decides he's going to sell it, basically. He's, he's selling access to see the beautiful marble, and he's getting all greedy with the green leaves and the green money. But then the marble gets picked up, and he doesn't have anything anymore. He has to figure out what to do with his life, what's going to happen to him. He ends up making a collection, having a much better time just letting people see things without charging for it. So it's got a good little message there, but it's also just a beautiful story and beautiful pictures. I, I'm sure all of you remember Amanda Gorman. She was that wonderful, wonderful, wonderful inaugurational poet. Her book of poetry is actually pushed back. It's going to come out December 7th, and please pre-order it because we won't be getting a reprint of it before Christmas. So what they printed, which is admittedly a lot of books, is what we can get as a country. But this is her picture book, which absolutely gorgeous, wonderful message, as you'd expect from her. Just a, a story of a group of kids who want to make the world a better place. So they go around to each other and end up building a better world. Um, this is a gift for you, Emily Winfield Martin. She's just a really charming, beautiful illustrator. Um, this is just a good, like a birthday gift or just a special gift kind of book, or you're given a story, you're given a, a moment to share with each other. Um, and in a very similar vein, I really like birthdays. And this book absolutely encapsulates that love of birthdays. You know that day you wake up and everything's special and you know it's your day. You know you have beautiful routines. It's going to follow you your whole life that you have good birthdays. You get to make wonderful wishes. So excellent birthday present. Um, if you have a kid in your life and you probably heard of Adam Rubin, he did a book called Dragons Love Tacos. Mm -hmm. And this is his next one. It's Gladys the Magic Chicken. His tale set in ancient Greece where the magic chicken kind of fools people into doing various adventures and things like this. Um, and then the last one in the picture book section is Amos McGee misses the bus. And if you guys remember Amos McGee's sick day, he's a zookeeper. Um, and one day he has a sick day, the first book, and everybody comes and takes care of him. In this case, he's missed the bus, so they have to come and get him. And it's the whole parade of animals. Um, those are the picture books. The middle readers. Um, Beatrice Prophecy. Kate DiCamillo is just a star of the middle grade world. She did Because of Wind Dixie. She did um, She did a lot of really, really great things. She's won two Newberries. Um, and this one, she teams up with a two-time Caldecott winner to do illustrations for this story. A girl is discovered by a monk um, and a very ill-tempered goat. And she has clearly been running away from something. She has no memories of anything except she knows how to read and write. And in this country, girls are not supposed to know how to read and write. But then she needs to go out into the world and find out what happened to her, who is she, and what is the prophecy about her about. So it's it's got a little bit of intense moments, um, but it's not something that you wouldn't be able to read as a young person and understand it. Playing the cards you're dealt. Now, it's, a, it's not always easy to find a book for boys who are gentle boys who want to learn how to be gentle men. Um, and it's, it's a hard balance because you want people to have great adventures and things like that, but you also need those stories and role models in, in people's lives. This is one of those books. I love this author. Um, the one is a book about a boy who's trying to be a good man. Um, he loves the game of spades, and he's struggling with his father, who has a gambling addiction, and his older brother, who's away at a fancy school, so away from him, and just trying to figure out who he wants to be in his life. 
And then this one just came out. Do you guys remember the book Wonder? This is her next middle grade novel. It is nothing like Wonder, but it is fantastic. It's about a boy whose father is a photographer. He takes beautiful pictures. It's the 19th century, so they're just at the cutting edge of how to take photography. And then one day he's, he's sort of kidnapped um, by a group of men who are calling him by a different name and asking him to be a counterfeiter. So this boy goes on an adventure to find his father and to figure out what's going on and to rescue him. And throughout this whole journey, he is helped along by a horse named Pony. It has beautiful pictures um, that are taken from the author's collection of old silver type photos. Just really cool ghost type story as well. It's an adventure, but it's also an adventure where everyone grows up and grows in different ways. So very satisfying book. Um, this one for middle readers is, is a very interesting book in that I don't necessarily think it's just for kids. I think this is the next boy, the mole, the fox, the horse. It's a series of short stories about two boys. It's kind of mind-bending. They're, they're in different places. They're in different themes and worlds, but it's the same two boys, and they're, they're going through a similar emotional path each time. They're beautiful illustrations. Brian Selznick is really well-known for his... Um, Pencil work. He just does these great kaleidoscope images throughout the book. So it's that idea that things turn tiger skin rug. Um, this one surprised me. I was reading it and I, I thought this could have been set in the 1970s except for two places. One of the places is that the father of, of this family who has moved from India to Scotland, he is obsessed with a website he's created about who's who in Indian England society. So he has this like crazy website of, oh, these are the Patels that are in this town and these are the Patels in here and this is how they're related. And the son is obviously like, I will never need to use this. And then he does because there's a tiger skin in their house that they've taken over um, that comes to life. And he has to, with his younger brother and a neighbor, return the tiger skin to where it should be. Um, luckily it's a magic tiger skin. So it can take them on these journeys and flies across seas and, and just brings them to good places. It's kind of an immigrant story at the same time as being a acceptance story of yourself and of, of where you're going to be. And we're going to keep going. Um, all of these books, I'd like to point out, are, are really amazing books for adults as well. Um, I think one of the reasons a lot of people my age are reading young adult is because they they have these timeless themes of you you learn and you grow and you change at these very pivotal moments and we're all still faced with pivotal moments even if we're no longer 16, 17 or 18. So these have these these great stories in that way. Um, the first one, Left-handed booksellers of London. Um, Garth Nix is a, is a very famous fantasy writer for, for young adults. He wrote Sabriel. Um, this one's just a total departure for him and honestly a total departure from a lot of young adult because usually it's set either in like medieval times or right now. This is set in 1983 in London. It's about a group of booksellers who have an underground business where they keep the ancient myths of England under control. So these, these ancient figures who are in charge of these towns or waterways or so on, they make sure that they're not going to get in trouble. Um, and all of that is kind of churned apart when um, a young girl is looking for her father and runs into all of these people. Um, lots of fun. It's a good adventure book. I read this last week, um, and I added this on as a very late edition because I read it last week, and then I flipped it over, and I read it again. Um, it's just so much fun. It's a retelling of the Goose Girl, um, and it has these wonderful German fairy tale aspects to it. So you ordinarily don't get the sense of Freud the uncanny, but this one has that kind of nightmare situation. Um, the main character is a thief who's taken the guise of her mistress when she was a maid, um, and is circulating through the society, taking all the jewels, and she ends up cursed and ends up having to overthrow a tyrant at the same time as trying to figure out how she can be not cursed. Um, just a really fun story, just touching and heartwarming and hilarious all at once. And the next one 
there's been a lot of dark books right now in YA, and I think you guys might remember from a couple of years ago me going, I swear not all of them are about abuse. And this one isn't. This one's one of those fun, interesting books. Um, a, a man is cursed to be alive only at night, and he's trying to figure out how he can get out of this curse of immortality. At the same time, a young woman is trying to restore her society that's been slaughtered. I know I said it wasn't dark. It's, it's a little dark. Um, they end up falling in love. It's a very sweet story. It's, it's one of those where you need someone to escape. You need to find someone who wants just a story that they'll be happy with. This is it. Um, On the Hook is set in contemporary America. And it's about a, a boy who has to make some really hard choices in life. Um, his brother is killed by his bully's brother. And he decides he's going to enact his revenge. Um, he almost he almost kills the, the bully. Um, they both end up going to a juvenile detention facility. And they end up kind of both of them making different choices along the line. And you can see how a good kid could end up in a bad place, but also how he could end up getting out of that place with a proper support. Um, just a really interesting glimpse into a life that I think a lot of people we know wouldn't ever see. And it's a nice way to spread that story without it feeling didactic or condescending. This last one, this is a fantastic book. It's about a, a set of people on a plantation in Louisiana. The plantation mistress was um, somewhat kidnapped out of uh, Marie Antoinette's France and taken over. Um, she is just this despot of a woman, but you also feel really sorry for her. She left her country and she ended up coming to Louisiana with nothing in this strange place, in this strange situation, and she made of it what she could. Her body slave, so her the, the young woman who takes care of her every need, um, is another figure in this book. Um, it doesn't it doesn't shy away from the, the nastiness of slavery and it does it in a way that makes you realize, okay, well, I feel for this woman who I feel for her slave, I feel for her son. Like all of these people have human aspects to them. All of them are people that you might know, all of them have goodness, all of them have awful traits. Um, and it's just a wonderful, complex book that, you know, deserves a lot of discussion. I think it'd be a great book club pick. Um, the big series of the year, Diary of Wimpy Kins on number 16, and that's going to be out at the end of the month. Um, Dave Pilkey of Captain Underpants fame, he has a new series out, Cat Kid Comic Club, which is a spinoff from Dogman, and Cat Kid Comic Club Book 2 Perspectives is going to be out on the 30th of November. If you have a kid in your life who loves these things, these are your big dates. Like, Come and get them, they'll love it. Um, the next thing I just want to kind of point out is that there's been a huge resurgence of graphic novel adaptations of older series, so Babysitter Club books, that kind of thing. Um, they've also done books like Animorphs, so these are just graphic novel books that make it really fun to read. Graphic novels are a wonderful way to learn how to read and learn how to love reading because they have the pictures that make you want to read them, and they're quick, but there's still a lot of intellectual learning in there. So there's also Magic Treehouse, Wings of Fire, Dragon series, is I Survived series is um, now in graphic novels. Guinness Book of World Records is a perennial favorite for everybody. There's a new one of those. And we've discovered these things are going like chocolate bars. Everybody loves these tiny little books. They're $5.99. They just have all these cool, interesting facts about whatever this is. This one happens to be dinosaurs. Um, perfect stocking stuffers. We should also mention Nancy Wayne's Day's books. These ones are here. This one's very much brand new. I love applesauce. It's fun to wear because I am sure in my life I wore a lot of applesauce and it was a lot of fun. Um, and she was a founding member of the Unruly Sets. So. Um, this is my favorite bedtime story right now. Um, it's not a traditional bedtime story in that no one's going to sleep in it. But it is, it's about a house, an old country farmhouse who had a family that the house just loved and they loved the house and everybody in it. But of course the family goes away and the house is sitting by itself for a very long time. It's all alone. And um, various people come 
and they say, oh, I don't know about this. The house is too old. We'll have to add on to it. And then this family comes. And the house is like, oh, maybe this will be my family. Maybe these people will stay. And they do. It's just a sweet, beautiful book. Um, if anybody's ever moving house in your life, that's a good one. This is my favorite board book right now. Um, it's just such a funny little little book because it'll make everybody laugh at the same time. It's, I love you till the cows come home. And the cows are maybe going to space. And there's just all kinds of fun things that you can read and look at and think about of the different ways that people love each other. Um, and then finally, this year we've lucked out. So here's a pop-up book on the weather. Um, I, I think a very careful kid would be able to read this. Um, but you can see that it is a little bit delicate. Um, it's just lovely, though. I think grown-ups should like it. And then inside a suitcase, um, it's the story of what is inside someone's suitcase. And as you go through the book, and as he goes on his journey, you get to flip more and more layers. Very fun book to flip through and look at. And we've breathlessly gone through the kids' book. So we'll start with hard covers. And the first book up is What Storm, What Thunder by Chauncey. Um, she is a Haitian. Uh, she's writing about the earthquake in Haiti, and she's telling it from the point of view, first from a market woman, and then each chapter has a different person's point of view until it comes back around to the end where the market woman has the last chapter. Um, absolutely beautifully told, really heart-wrenching because it's not an easy story. I mean, it was such an ugly, ugly scene. And this came out like the week before the next earthquake hit. So it, it's extremely timely. This is an amazing story of five different people in different time periods. Uh, a young man and a young woman during the siege of Constantinople, one on the outside of the walls, the other on the inside. Uh, a young kid who, I want to say Northwest, somewhere in the Northwest, who is on the Asperger's um, spectrum, who starts to engage with an owl, and when his neighborhood is threatened and the owl is threatened, he decides to take things into his own hands. There is a, a gentleman who uh, has had a very interesting life. He's now working with some kids, local school kids, at the local library. And they are uh, putting on a play that he has put together. And there is a young woman who is on a spaceship somewhere out in the blue. Uh, they are all held together by a an ancient Greek text that has been lost and found. And it's a remarkable book told in such a way that, okay, it's a big fat guy, but boy, you just can't stop. Um, this is really worth your time and effort. It's really something. Uh, Louise Erdrich, who is writing a book about contemporary times. She owns a bookstore in Minneapolis and Birchbark Books is part of this story, and uh, a young native woman who works in the bookstore and a ghost haunting the bookstore, and George Floyd dies. Just really compelling, really beautifully told. Nobody can write a story like Louise. And Matrix. Lauren Groff, this is the story of a young woman who is in the circle of Eleanor of Aquitaine and is banished because she's ungainly and not pretty and they send her off to some weird monastery and she's supposed to, you know, just go away and well she finds her voice and her her strengths and she creates this woman centered universe that works beautifully and uh, in the midst of feudal times, she makes it all work. Um, we're really compelling story, really strong characters, really strong feminine point of view. Burnt Coat by Sarah Hall. Um, young woman artist who 
do, works in a, an interesting sculptural um, burnt wood, and she makes enormous, I mean, really enormous sculptures. And she is attracted to a man, the pan, second, third, fourth pandemic comes along, and it is their life going forward. And living through the disease, living through an isolated place, and creating art. Everybody who has touched this, oh my goodness, it's a it's tiny little thing. It's such a good story. She writes beautifully. Claire, Claire Keegan is Irish. Uh, she's writing about an, an Irish man who is a coal deliverer. He, he he delivers coal and things to various people in the village, and he, uh, right at Christmas time, takes a load of coal out to the convent and discovers a young woman who's been locked in a shed. Um, it's really a story of the Magdalena Laundries, yeah. and this you know this poor young thing who is was pregnant, maybe still is pregnant. I can't tell you for sure, but. Um, it is really heartfelt. It is so beautifully told that I finished it, I, I turned around and I read it again. And then I, everyone I've handed it to has said, oh yeah, stack that one up. It's going to be a hard one to get because it's small press and it's coming so late. But keep this in mind. You'll want to read it and you'll want to give it. Once There Were Wolves, uh, by the author of Migrations. Um, this, I think, is a better book. Um, this is a story of a woman who is a wolf scientist, and um, a rather, she's got a, a sister at home who she has taken care of. You're not sure what's gone wrong with the sister. And the town in Scotland where they are trying to reintroduce wolves are not at all happy that they're there trying to reintroduce wolves. Got some tension, um, but it, it's a very compelling story. Okay, Bewilderment, Richard Powers' new book. Uh, he won the Pulitzer for Overstory. This is a very different book, but it's he writes so well. Um, story of a father who is grieving and his 10, 11-year-old son who is really grieving. The son is uh, suffering from autism of some sort. The teachers want to put him onto drugs. The father doesn't want him on medication. He wants him to, you know, live through this and get past the, the, the grieving and what have you. Um, the father reaches a point where he has to do something and uh, there is a friend of the mother's who is doing biofeedback, neuro stuff, and says, we can work with this. We can feed your your wife's brain waves into your son. Mm -hmm. And he makes remarkable progress as a result. So it's the, the young boy's story and the father's, and really, it's, it's a knockout. Um, Elizabeth Strout. Uh, She's just so good. So it was Olive and Olive again, and then there was um, the Lucy Barton. And this is in the Lucy Barton group of books. It's always about love and loss. It's always about being alone and living through aloneness. Um, Lucy has lost her husband. Her first husband needs some help. He's, he's, he's remarried. His new wife is leaving him. So she says, yeah, yeah, we'll go on this trip. We'll do this. We'll go find your long-lost sister, whoever it is. Um, so it is their story. It's a sort of a road trip story, and it's the story of two people who are know each other well but not really so much anymore because they've gone different ways and how they come together and how they resolve things. Uh, she writes just so very well. Okay. If it weren't for Anthony Doerr, this would be my choice. Mm -hmm. Still Life by Sarah Winman. This is a story of a family that comes together. It's, this is a young soldier in Italy during World War II, and he meets up with this woman by chance and just 
in passing, they live through something, and then it goes somewhere else altogether. And you're back in England in the pub where everybody hangs out and come to find out that while he was in Italy, he helped save a man who has now left his house to him. So he's got a house in Italy, and he's got all these pub friends and neighbors and, and so on. And it just works in so many wonderful ways. It makes you laugh out loud. And I cried so hard. And it was just, it's the kind of book you need right now, where you're completely out of yourself and, it, and in someone else's life and loving every minute of it. So look for that one, please. And we'll do paperbacks and we'll go fast. Um, what can I say about Piranesi? This is a very odd book. <laughs> the story of a man who is living in a castle place and he doesn't really know how he got there and he's not really sure what he's doing there. And it, it's, it's bizarre and wonderful and it, little pieces are revealed and you think you know what's going on and then you, something else comes up and you find out that's not what it was at all, and it's it's crazy, it's wonderful, it's worth a look. Uh, yeah, Jesse, Transcendent Kingdom. She is a very fine writer. Um, this is the story of a young woman who's at Stanford. Her mother, who lived in Alabama, where she came from, is having a breakdown and comes to live with her while she's trying to get her doctorate done. Um, it's an immigrant story. It's uh, uh, Africa versus U.S. It's U.S. South versus North. It's got a lot of different levels, and it's um, very worth your while. Okay, I think you guys read Unseen. Roy Jacobson, which was the story of the Norway Island, oh, yes. volume two of three. This is The White Shadow, and I just love this. Um, this is the sister who is now on the island by herself during World War II, and a shipwreck happens off their coast, and she discovers someone living in the barn. and. Um, and there will be a third one eventually, and I can hardly wait. Boy in the Field, Margot Margo Livesey writes a really good book. Um, this is a story of three siblings who are walking home from school, and they notice that there is a young man over in a field. Um, and they go over to investigate, and they manage to, to save his life. And then the story goes off into different directions where each of the kids tells their own story and each of them has a very different take on who that who this person was and how things went and each of the kids then eventually meets up with the young man who is quite charismatic and an interesting person in and of himself and then from there uh, uh, James McBride I hadn't read before and now I will go back and read everything because he's got such a light touch. Um, this is the story of an of a old guy whose wife has just died. His, his nickname is Suit Coat because he's a, a deacon at the local Baptist church and he always wears a suit coat. So he's, his name is Suit Coat and he, they live in the projects in the Bronx. Be, this is in the 70s before just before things got really ugly. So it's pre-drug war kind time. But there is a local drug dealer and he's always down by the flagpole where the old folks meet. And one day Suit Coat takes a gun and shoots him right in front of everybody. And then the things go south from there. Um, it's really funny. It's really evocative of time and place. And uh, it's, it's so much fun. Okay, this is the story of a young woman who is uh, trying to escape something in her life, and she's off on a quest to find the last flock of Arctic terns. And she makes some bad decisions. She gets on a weird boat and, you know, t 
tells people, if you let me do this, I think you'll find fish. There's hardly any fish left in the sea. It's got an environmental message going on. It's got uh, a quest. It's got a soul searching. It's a very fine book. Uh, David Mitchell is one of those people who I dearly love, and he's definitely an acquired taste because he's weird. Uh, I like weird. But this this is not as weird as many of his books. And this is a story of a band that is that comes together um, when the Beatles are just hitting. And so music is changing. This is an, an English group who's coming to the US. So it's got a, a strong rock and roll flavor. It's just a really good, well-told story. Um, so it's a band that, that comes together by somebody saying, oh, you'd be good, and you'd be good, and you'd be good, and then they make a life together and that make music that actually works. Okay, my favorite book last year, uh, Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. I love her. I think she's so smart and so clever. Uh, this is the story of Anne Hathaway, Shakespeare's wife. It is the story of their courtship, their their early life, of their twins, the, the twin boy whose name is Hamnet dies. And then it, it becomes a story of grieving and coping. And you get such a flavor for both the time and the place. And she is such an interesting character, uh, an herbalist and a, a you know would-be witch kind of person. And then their relationship where he's going off to do these plays in London and she's staying home because the daughter has lung problems and they don't want the plague to come. Well, the plague comes and Hamnet dies. And wow, just wow. Um, here's another really, really good book to read when you don't want to have to hear politics and if you want to just lighten up and keep it fun. Fresh Water for Flowers. Um, it's translated from the French. This is a Europa edition. They do such beautiful books. Um, this is a book that's been really hard to keep in stock. So I finally just bit the bullet and we got a room full of it. <laughs> if you read it, you'll want to give it to, to people. It's that kind of story. It's a young woman who uh, is making some bad choices. She ends up marrying a guy who probably she shouldn't be married to and things don't go as well as they should. But she finds a job as the caretaker in a cemetery, hence fresh water for flowers. As part of her job, she runs into a, a group of people who are just delightful, who are people you want to know and want to spend time with. And she blossoms. She she makes things happen. And I, I don't want to give away this really important part of the book, but they're, they're trying to discover what happened to uh, somebody who is very close to her. When I first read it, I just went, <gasps> and I just <laughs> could not believe that happened. So I want to leave you with that opportunity. Um, light, fun, this is Britain in the 50s at one of those boardwalk places like Brighton Beach or one of them. It's the story a uh, magician and his assistant and her husband. And it's just, it's fun, it's quick, it's good. have to tell you, this is the other one. This is happiness. This is such a delightful book. This is Ireland. Uh, this is a young man who has left the seminary to, because he's not sure he should be a priest. He told his mother before she died this is what he, he would do. But it's not quite right, so he goes to live with his grandparents who are out in the hinterlands. And it happens to be the year that electricity comes to the town. And it's just fun. It's light. It's not stupid it's you can give this book to anybody okay now there are a few books that we put together that are gifty type things i'm not going to talk about them we've spent our time here but frog and toad are doing their best this is a parody of the frog and toad books which are just 
you know. E almost every kid has read Frog and Toad, just like Little Bear. Well, this is Frog and Toad brought up to date, where they can't get the computer to work. And <laughs> it, it's a parody, but it's delightfully so. So think about that for your 30-somethings. And then your guide to not getting murdered in a quaint English village. <laughs> and the title says all you need to know about that book. There are some great cookbooks coming, more, more than we have to show you at the moment. Uh, Gastro Obscura from the Atlas Obscura people. Yeah. This has got crazy stuff on every page. Yeah. And if you are a traveler or if you are a foodie, that's a good bet. Uh, at home in the wine country, and look at other people's lives, you know. Uh, <laughs> Dave Chang, who is the guy who wrote Eat a Peach, uh, he, and this is his at home cooking, and he uses a microwave a lot. And that I find very interesting. Uh, human nature, everybody needs a pretty picture book. This is a good one. And lastly, the kind of entertaining we do now, where you just throw it on the table, make it look pretty before you do that. Ta-da! Thank you.